as far as the school of life goes, a walk in the woods with Carlos is like years of education compacted into a single day. This is the most profound foraging experience I've ever had. Chiapas has an incredible diversity and abundance of different types of mushrooms, especially now in the rainy season. There are estimates of upwards of 13,000 different types of mushrooms that thrive here in the mountainous highland environment and the lowland jungles of Chiapas. 300 of these varieties of mushrooms are deemed to be edible. The pre-colonial civilizations that are found in Mexico have an extraordinary and intimate connection with these fungi. In southern Mexico and Guatemala, there have been many different types of mushroom stones and carvings found. So, I got to thinking, it's rainy season right now. There's definitely a lot of mushrooms in this area. How do we go about connecting with someone who has the knowledge and respect for the local environment that is gonna take us foraging in a very conscientious and meaningful way? We had an opportunity to connect with a local guide named Carlos. Carlos regularly forages for these mushrooms and takes them home to his family to eat. We start walking through a bio-reserve on the outside of town and I immediately tell Carlos that I have a keen interest in learning about the mushrooms and the mycology of the region. La lluvia empieza ahorita. Carlos started taking us off the path down to the microscopic world of fungi and pointing out things that I would have blindly walked by as a newcomer to the region. What are you doing in there, dude? I'm foraging for mushrooms. There's like 13,000 different varieties here. 300 you can eat. We've probably seen 100 of them today already. It's very important that you contract someone with a local knowledge to find out exactly what types of fungi you're gonna be able to eat. There's a saying that there are old mushroom hunters and there are bold mushroom hunters, but there are no old, bold mushroom hunters. Es como esto y ya no sirve. Y es podrido. Pero podemos podemos hacer así. Es mucho semilla. Y eso sigue creciendo, ¿no? Sí. We exercised extreme caution and followed Carlos's lead. Quite a few of the different fungi varieties that we came upon, Carlos told us were not safe to eat. However, a few of them are safe to eat. Saina. It's for pasta. Gracias. Si, it's for pasta. While foraging, we also randomly came upon a cave. And this thing looked so sketchy, I would definitely not have gone down there. It was very slick. It was uh, very dark and abyss-like at the bottom. But once again, having a local guide, I felt totally empowered and we were confident enough and trusted Carlos that he was gonna take care of us and we walked straight into the crevasse. So we found a cave, or rather, we were led to a cave. We're going straight down into the Maya underworld. We didn't even have to sign a waiver for this. <laughs> so these are volcanic rocks, which means these are the same kinds of rocks that you can use for the Temescal that we just did last week. That's amazing. See. Sí. Sí. Mm. Amazing. This is the Cueva del Agua. Sí. Son 160 metros uh -huh. como caracol. Wow. Sí. Es una, eh, una cuenca donde se junta todo el agua. Sí. Y sale en los manantiales, ríos, todo. Así ya fue. I'm going to go in. I'm going to follow his lead here. Truly going into the depths of nowhere. I've got to watch out for the poison arrows. Holy guacamole. Oh, I see it. 
These are volcanic vapors that you're witnessing right here from the molten core of the earth all the way up through the Maya underworld through these caves and out into the jungle. We just came from another world that was incredible. We don't usually get guides, but that is exactly why you should get a guide. I would never climb down there without someone telling me that it's okay. That was amazing. A walk in the woods with Carlos was truly the education of a lifetime. I wish that everybody had an opportunity to deal with a local guide who has a historical and ancestral knowledge of the fauna and flora of this region. It's been a while since I've had a shower. Oh, gracias. Oh, it's like Shawshank Redemption in the jungle. It, this was a lifetime memory. It's something that Becca and I will treasure forever, having this opportunity. Mm. Don't love my crush. Yeah. ¿Qué es esto? Anís. Anís. Uh -huh. Ah, it is like crush. Doesn't smell great. Okay, machete comes up This is amazing. I read a book once called The Language of Flowers, and that means that all flowers have meaning behind it, but this is even better because all flowers have purpose behind them. Now we can plant this at our Airbnb. I slung my jacket on here. It was like a nice little place to keep it, but now it's full of mushrooms and uh, flowers and roots, and it doesn't stay anymore, but you know, pros and cons. <laughs> With Carlos's recommendation for the coral mushrooms, we decided to make pasta with them. And this was truly an exceptional experience to be able to go from foraging this wild fungi and picking it out of the ground to that night pairing it with pasta and creating an inspired local mushroom pasta dish. So we have two different kinds of coral mushrooms here. They were a little bit of a different color before. One of them used to be a little more white and the other one a little more yellow. They've changed color and it's only been a few hours, which is kind of insane, but I love that we're eating fresh food. I mean, look how these are dark already. We're just gonna add this to the compost pile. Chiapas is full of surprises. It's a very beautiful place that I feel is so close to the true romance and beating heart of life. It feels like we are so connected here and just a walk through the woods or a visit to the market and everyday life, it feels like there's something so deeply meaningful and, and something that is often hidden in the blind spot of a lot of developed, advanced countries, etc. So having the opportunity to be here, go foraging for mushrooms, walk in the woods, these are all tremendously inspiring experiences that I wish more people could have and could benefit from in this very difficult time for a lot of people. 
As the world gets more and more controlled, borders get closed, and fear propaganda and negative feedback cycles seem to dominate and perpetuate in the news cycle, it's so empowering and alleviating to know that there are still people like Carlos keeping their ancestral wisdom alive and willing to share it with people who approach in the right manner and are conscientious and respectful and looking forward to collaborating together more as cultures as we try to figure out where we go next in the global village.